everyone, Freedy here with you, and welcome back to today's Destiny 2 build that I have to show, and a happy new year to you all. Today's build will be a high risk, high reward, experimental warlock setup, for the players who aren't afraid to risk it all, and to then release a much stronger version of your super when in critical health. And personally I believe if you can nail this build specifically, you will then be able to expand on the build further in your own ludicrous way. To achieve this though, we will need to make use of both from the deaths and protective life mods, which both have a high risk in terms of activation and high rewards in terms of fully using it. We will then be using a combination of controverse hold, super and discipline mods, and some mass work weaponry to make everything come full circle. I like to think of this build as a glass cannon, as if done correctly, you can increase your super damage and bring out an extra 30% of damage thanks to from the death mod, while having extra protection at the same time. It can also to a degree one shot many named ultras, but if you mess up, then you either leave out the situation with a silver of health or death. Even when you look at it, it's not going to be pretty. But I assure you, if you're looking for a build that makes full use of these two mods, and you're not afraid to get risky in the face of danger, then I'm 99% sure you'll like this. So the subclass we will be going with is the Tunnel of Chaos, and making full use of the perks provided. Now Bloom is just Bloom, and has its uses when using your melee or grenades, but Entropic Pool, Chaos Accelerant, and Cataclysm is where it's at for the majority of our ability stacking. With Chaos Accelerant, we can turn our standard grenades into more deadly and stronger versions, which will vary upon all three of the grenades available. But I recommend using Vortex Grenades for maximum efficiency and damage. Combining Chaos Accelerant with Controverse Hold, which provides back a random number of grenade energy upon hits, and then further adding on Enhanced Ashes to Assets for super energy upon grenade kills, and then also Impact Induction for grenade energy back upon melee kills, and you'll have some wonderful chemistry going on with the build to where everything feeds into itself, so as long as you make use of your grenades, everything will go peachy. As well with the great synergy from Chaos Accelerant, Cataclysm now is what we'll be building up for for the climatic finish. Although slow, its main appeal is the two damage phases it provides, with the big large impact damage and then the shattered version after the initial detonation. This is how with the right circumstances where we can increase our damage with the use of from the death mod and gain an extra 30% super damage upon the first impact, but only if we're in critical health, which is great either way, as when you look into how much the base damage of Cataclysm is and then compare it to the burst version, you can then also see exactly what you're getting your money out of, but at the same time if it doesn't all work out, you're gonna die a lot if you don't plan ahead. Now. Of course, you can use the Eternal of Hunger and Fission subclass as well, as they can benefit from the grenade and super regeneration usage. Although, this will all depend on how you're going to be making full use of your super and from the death mod. Eternal of Hunger and Chaos will both benefit from the mod as they are quick firing supers and don't start health regen until they get a kill, but Eternal of Fission will only be able to make use of it once, as, surprise surprise, it's a roaming super which regain health upon each kills. So do think about which one you want to go with. For the weapons, I recommend you have at least two or three weapons, fully mass work so you can pick up orbs of light and trigger both taking charge and protective light, and of course build up our super. Ideally if you can get a weapon with demolitionist like the new infinite path 8 pulse rifle, this can prove helpful with grenade regen, but it's not a must have. For me, I have gone with the buzzard sidearm in the primary slot for its good stats and flexibility, while well, my secondary slot is the Infinite Path Pulse, as I did manage to get one with Demolitionist, and my heavy is a rocket launcher for the extra splash damage, of choice. If you think having Demolitionist is a bit of an overkill for the build, then you can use the Bad Juju instead, which can aid us in Super Regen, but make sure you still have a Master Walk Weaponry or two. For the stats, we are going to be focusing purely now on the Regen speed of both grenades and the Intelligence stat, as that's where our main power in terms of damage will be coming from. Both stats are showing around 65, with Discipline getting a 51 second cooldown and Intelligence getting a 4 minutes 18 cooldown, and this is where you want to stop, as if you already have mods such as the Ashes to Assets, Impact Induction and Discipline slash Intelligence mods, those there will fix up the rest of the build. Now of course, if you're a new light player, you may not have reached the level of certain mods like shown, just of yet, but if that's the case, don't worry, focus your stats points in the area that you'll be using a lot more in game. For example, if you're going to be using your grenades a lot, then get your grenade stat as high as possible while making sure your attention stat is around the 50 level, vice versa for your attention stat as well. 
For the rest of the stats, both recovery and resilience are in the mid 40s, which is ideally what you'll want, as we need this to be relatively low, so we can trigger from death's mod on a regular but passive nature. But be warned, this will result in you dying a lot more than normal in the higher end game. For armor, you will need the controversial hold, with ideally an arg affinity, so you can slot in impact induction mod if you have one. But if not, that's not a big problem. You would then also need to have three of the new seasonal armors, so you can add in taking charge and protective light, and also from the death's mod, of course. Best way to go about this is to literally just rank up your season pass like normal, or rank up Shaxx and Zavala for the armor pieces. Pretty simple. So now, for the armor mods that we have available, we have the following. Head, Intelligence mod. Arm, Discipline and Enhanced Impact Induction mod. Chest, Intelligence and Protective Light mod. Leg, Intelligence and Taking Charge mod. Warlock Bond, Concussive Dampener, Enhanced Ashes to Assets, and From the Deaths mod. Now that we covered the main things that the build will consist of, how will this practically work in reality? Well, the idea here is to build up our super through our near infinite amount of grenades, and also build up our charge of light so that when the time comes and our health is low, we will have protective light kick in for extra damage resistance, and then we'll also receive a 30% buff to a super thanks to the From the Deaths mod. Here's an example of me using it against the Ultra Cabal in the Tribute Hall. The moment my shield breaks, protective light triggers, which severely reduces incoming damage. In this time frame, you just need to activate your super, and there you have it. An enhanced Nova Bomb that now does 123k damage upon impact, and then breaks off for an extra 35k per projectiles, instead of the base 96k damage, and 27k per projectile. This can, in theory, and practice, can one-shot Ultras and Champions, either by the impact itself, or with the projectiles. But not all the time, sometimes it will leave them with a silver health, which, to be honest, you can just finish off with your main primary weapon. And also, sadly, it can't one-shot the unstoppable enemies. I've tried it, it, it just, it's terrible. I've tried many methods, and the unstoppable enemies seem to have a large amount of health that is abnormal compared to any other enemies in-game. But it does take a good chunk of health away from them, so there's still a pro in that con. Now, Taking Charge and Protective Light are two new Seasonal Dawn mods that provide some very strong synergy for survival in the world. Taking Charge now allows us to stack Charges of Light for a max of 2, unless you extend it with Stacks on Stacks or Charge.Mod, while Protective Light reduces income damage when our shield is low, but only works if you have something like Taking Charge or any other mod that can allow you to create Charges of Light. Protective Light, with its base duration, will increase the more stacks you have, so times 1 we have 5 seconds, and then times 2 you have 10 seconds, and that's if you have one mod and then it goes to 4th to up to max 5, which at max 5, it goes to 20 seconds, which is which is great, and honestly something that a lot of players should actually stack into their builds. This here is what makes it a powerful and underrated mod that many people are now starting to pick up and integrate into their own builds, as it makes taking on tougher content less daunting, which is what's going to help us with our relatively low resilience. The way the build works is that you're building up to a major moment that you can release when you're at your final limit of health, and want that extra bit of crispy damage just to finish off a ultra, a boss, or just a very annoying ad. In many ways, it would be perfect to use in Gambit, as you can trigger from the deaths by using the boss to weaken you, and then just throw it back at them. Although, from my experience, I've had some 50-50 encounters. And even if you feel like it's way too risky to use it, you can always just use your base super to do damage, and then wait for another moment to try again, so you have many options or routes to take as to how you want to go about this. Personally for me, I've been using this build a lot for Nightfalls, specifically the 950 Nightfalls, and it works well when you nail it against the ultra enemies you face or the named enemies that are very, very tough to take on if you don't have a super or if you don't have any heavy with you. And the same can be said if you use this in the Sundial or the Menagerie as well. Basically, any content where you can easily build up and trigger the build to do max damage, there and then. I did also want to add on another Seasonal Dawn armor piece to extend my Protective Light's duration, but unfortunately, the SOD armor piece I had didn't have great stats and I'm still currently looking for one, and I didn't really want to justify swapping out my current helmet for the SOD version that I had, as it would basically throw all my stats out of whack. But you the viewers may want to look into this as it may benefit you a lot. 
But okay, you'll probably want to know more about the downside of the build. So for starters, like I said in the beginning of the video, it's a glass cannon build with high risk and high reward. As both your resilience and recovery are, or will be relatively low, you will take a lot more damage than normal, to the point of where a dreg, who never really causes you problem, somehow becomes a mini boss of his own. And this is all done because we need to trigger from the deaths and protective light easily, instead of waiting around. But that's the major risk of the build, as while you're waiting, you're becoming vulnerable to a lot more damage than normal. And it's not bad if you know what you're doing, but at times, even having protective light won't always be enough to protect you. But secondly, activating from the deaths can also be a pain at times, if you don't plan out how much damage you need to take. Because sometimes you'll be able to pull this off flawlessly by just playing like normal, but other times you can get completely shredded in the blink of an eye, which is what you can see a lot of from this coming gameplay. And this can be annoying for you and your teammates, as you could be losing viable time and DPS, all because you're trying to trigger two mods. And then lastly, the damage you do is great, and I mean great, I mean really great, as it does a ton of damage for majority of bosses and enemies alike. But it's not endgame worthy to the point of being meta, because of the complications of the mods and the stats. Using this in Raid for example is possible if you play around with your stats and you know exactly what you're doing. But with what's currently shown, I wouldn't take this one with me for the sake of my allies, as it will basically put them behind in terms of damage and time frame. The same can be said for 980 Nightfalls, which is risky, it's possible, but extremely risky if you don't go in without having a game plan at hand. Basically, any content requires a lot more preparation than others, where you need to focus a lot more stats in say resilience and recovery, won't be suitable for this build, unless you are happy to play around with the build and improve on its main weakness, which might make it a bit more difficult in terms of activating protective light and from the death's mod. But either way you look at it, what you have to do here is just play around. It can still be useful in raids, and it can still be useful in 980 Nightfalls, just not currently what's been shown. But anyways, here we are. You now have your very own glass cannon build with high grenade and super usage. It can now also dish out some whopping extra damage when you're in critical health. Now, who would have thought? Being a masochist wasn't that bad of an idea. So if you enjoyed the video, then please by all means leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.